right, guys, here we go. We're going to go through the conduction system, okay? All right. All right, hopefully you guys read a little bit last night, yes? Okay, a little bit of review of A and P is what this chapter is all about, right? Okay, so going over the conduction system. And the conduction uh, system for the heart is like a nerve pathway for the heart. Okay, is everybody with me on that? And when we put somebody on an EKG, okay, it simply is measuring the electrical activity of the heart. Does it necessarily mean that the heart is pumping? That conduction system, the, those signals can go down, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the heart is pumping. Is everybody with me on that? And in cases like that, we call those PEAs, okay? Pulseless electrical activity, all right? So going onto an EKG machine, we're able to see certain things with regards to the conduction system, and that's what we're really looking at, okay? So with the conduction system, let me get my copy. All right, you all have this, yes? Okay, let's start at the beginning, okay? In the uh, atria, okay, there's something called the sinoatrial node. Does everybody see that there? Yes or no? All right, now that's what we call the pacemaker. Everybody see that? Yes? And that sets the pace anywhere between 60 and 100. We want to put that down there, okay? 60 and 100, okay? Uh, that spreads to both atria, and so just so you're aware, okay, Blood that is in the atria typically, passively, will go through the AV, um, the AV valves, okay? And then there's an atrial kick. Is somebody with me on that? So when the heart is beating, it's atria ventricles, atria ventricle, atria ventricle. Everybody with me on this, okay? The sounds that you hear are the closing of the AV valves and the semilunar valves. So it's loved up, loved up, loved up, loved up. In medicine, we have names for those, S1 and S2. Is somebody with me on that? People that have heart issues, okay, there's also others called S3 and S4, and I'm not gonna get into that right now. We'll get into that later, okay? So, with the conduction system, that signal is gonna then transfer and go down to the AV node. Everybody see where that is, yes or no? Okay, the AV node. And that sets the pace, are you ready? 40 to 60. I'll explain it in a second as to why I'm giving you these numbers. And then you go down the bundle of hiss, okay? And then you have the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers. And so we have a right bundle branch and a left bundle branch, okay? And some people may have a blockage in one of those branches, okay? Either way, with the Purkinje fibers, okay, and with the bundle branches, I'm sorry, they set the pace, you ready? 20 to 40. Now I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm giving you these numbers, okay? If you look at the second page, you'll see a typical EKG. Is somebody with me on this right here? All right, yes, okay. I'm going to explain to you what these squiggly lines are all about, okay? And we're going to come back to two words here, depolarization and repolarization. And I know people get very confused on these, so I'm going to make it very easy, okay? The P wave that you see there, you see the P wave? That signifies, when I see a P wave on a strip, that tells me that the SA node is working. Okay, make sure you sign in. The SA node is working, okay? And so, but P waves, again, it may not be there. They may have a flat line. They may even be inverted, upside down. And that says that there's something going on. When people get older, 
fatty tissue will go over the SA node, okay, and then older people end up with a condition called AFib. Is everybody with me on that? Okay? So, SA node sets the pace 60 to 80, everything's good. Now, let's say that you're one of those older people and you have AFib or where you have the sinoatrial node is no longer working, okay? Well, thank goodness that the AV node is still working, but the pace will be lower and the patient will present with bradycardia. Why? Because the rate is 40 to 60. Hey, Miss McCoy, do you need to see? Uh-huh. And did you need to see, JP? You got your IP address all taken mm -hmm. care of? Anybody else need to see JP? Huh? No? Okay. All right, so what happens now, the SA node no longer working, but thank goodness that the AV node is working and that's gonna set the pace. But on the strip, the patient's gonna appear bradycardic, okay? Other thing we're gonna see is that there's not gonna be a P wave, it may be flat or inverted. And when I say to you inverted, I'm saying upside down. And why is it upside down? Because the AV node is the guy that's kicking in now, and now you have retrograde conduction. It's going backwards. Does that make sense? Okay, if you're not following me, you better catch me now. Does that make sense, ladies? Brianna? Yes? Okay. Thank you. There are tons of videos out there, okay, to show you nerve conduction along with an ECG reading or EKG is the same, okay? Normal EKG. And as I come down, when you see me come down like this, I'm going down the, the bundle of hiss. That's what's happening. And then I come up and I come back down and then I make a T wave, okay? So a couple things are happening. This is a P wave, and what we have here is atrial depolarization. You with me on that? Which means if I'm depolarizing, I'm doing something. Follow me? Okay, I can make it that easy. All right, come down to the bundle of hiss. You're simply following it, okay? And then when you get to this piece, this shows me ventricular conduction. Conduction in where? The ventricles, yes or no? Okay, so that is then, if the ventricles are doing something, tell me what that is. Ventricular what? Class, wake up. What is the medical, what is the term I just used? No, it begins with a D, guys. Thank you. Ventricles are doing something, so that signifies ventricular. Okay, depolarization. With me on that? Okay. And then we're going to have a T wave, and this is going to actually signify ventricular repolarization. Meaning, relax. Does that make sense to you? Yes or no? Ventricles have to relax in order to fill. Yes or no? Okay, and so ventricles are relaxing. Tell me, do the atrios relax? Hi, sign in, and I have a handout. Do the ventricles relax? Yes or no? I'm sorry, the, the atria. Atrias do relax. We call that atrial repolarization, but we cannot see that on the EKG. Okay, why we can't see that? Because it's behind ventricular depolarization. You with me on that? Yes or no? Now I know that you guys have heard of A-flutter and A-fib, yes or no? <laughs> Premature ventricular contractions, PVCs. Oh, I have the hand up here, love. Okay. Okay. And so we can see that. We can see that on EKGs. Okay. So what you're looking at, let me go a little further now. Okay.
okay? Okay, this is a normal EKG reading with everything, all the components of the ECG. The P wave, the QRS, and the T wave. Is everybody with me on that? Turn the page. Okay, this is depicting a normal sinus rhythm. And so when you're at Miss Rojas, your third trimester is going to go over with you EKG readings, okay? I'm not going to take that glory away from her, all right? However, I'm just going to get you started. You're looking to make sure that you have all the components of your QRST, PQRST. Is somebody with me on that, okay? And there are times where what we're also noticing here is that if you put a sheet of paper and put a mark, can I borrow this real quick? Actually, let me borrow this. I put two marks on the sheet here, you see that? Okay, and if I move it, the marks fall right in line, don't they? Okay, that tells me that the rate is regular, as it should be, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So far, so good? Okay. Now I'm going to just show you a little bit with AFib. Okay. AFib has an appearance like this. Oh, let me go back and make a T wave. Okay. Okay. Make a T wave. Okay, so is everybody with me on this? I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it, Adriana? Yes? yes. Okay. What is something that you notice up here no right P away? No P waves. Pardon me? No P waves. There's no discernible P wave. It's just a, a squiggly line, okay? And so what, what it's showing you is that the atria is doing this, okay? Everybody with me? And then the ventricles contract, okay? What else do you see up here? Is it regular? No. no, it's not. Not with AFib, and I'm going to tell you why. Because when you have multiple what we call foci going off in the atria, it's causing the atria to quiver. Everybody with me on this? Okay? And it's a crap shoot now as to when the signal actually gets down to the ventricles. So AFib will always present with irregularity. Always. Here's the problem with AFib. You have blood in the atria, but the blood sits. What happens when blood sits? It clots. it clots. And that's what happens with these people. They may not know or feel the symptomology. They may feel heart rate's a little off. They, they, they blow it off. No big deal, okay? Until they end up with a stroke. <clears throat> and then that's when they learn they have AFib. So people on AFib are typically on anticoagulants. Is somebody with me on that? Be it aspirin, Xarelto, whatever it may be, to prevent clots. Okay, so is everybody with me there? Yes? All right. So that's just a little introduction with regards to the conduction system. But as we get older, one of the prominent issues that we see with older people is AFib. Okay, there's other things that they have too, heart block and stuff like that. Let's say that the AV node now is no longer working for whatever reason. Then who's gonna pick up the beat? Who's next? Well, not the bundle of his, go a little further down. Okay, the bundle branches, okay? They got a rate of what? 20 to 40, okay? At this point, okay, an elephant, full-grown elephant, the heart rate is 40 beats per minute. Our bodies cannot handle 40 beats a minute, okay? This is a time for a pacemaker, okay, to get this heart to beat. You'll see that on an EKG because you'll see a spike and then a capture, and if it's a two, if it's a two-wire, I'm going to just say two-wire pacemaker, 
Then you'll see a spike and a capture of the P wave, and then a spike and a capture of the ventricular wave. Is everybody with me there? Everybody with me? Okay. And then there's heart blocks and things like that that I'm not going to get into. But there is a wonderful person, and I put this up here on the top. Her name is Michelle Kuntz. And this woman has video after video after video about heart rhythms. Is everybody with me? And easy ways to remember them. Okay? So I just want to kind of break down a little bit conduction system. Okay? And what that's about. You all have that in AMP, I take it, I hope, yes? Okay? Do you understand it now is my question, I'm hoping. To a degree. Okay? So that's very important with regards to cardiovascular because can they have dysrhythmias or arrhythmias? Yes or no? Yeah. A dysrhythmia is an abnormal heartbeat, okay? If you talk about PVCs, okay, or PACs, it means it's premature. Are you with me on that? That means your, your typical, go back here, this rate here, okay, if I had a PVC, Okay, or I'm going to do a PAC. PACs are not abnormal, especially if you have a lot of sun drop, caffeine, things like that. A PAC will show up premature atrial contraction. Follow me. Is there a P wave then? Yes, the P wave is signaled by atrial contraction. Are you with me here? Okay? If it's quivering, that's what you're seeing there, but still no discernible P wave. Okay? Let me show you this one. If you see uh, something like this, do you see that? Multiple P waves, yes or no? <laughs> Guess what we got, guys? Atrial flutter. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. With me on that? So if there's a P wave, that should tell you right away, I want you to think atrial, okay? Just, just keep it very simple, think atrial, okay? With me? Again, can't make out a discernible P wave here, but there's something happening. So again, instead of this beep, 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 beep with flutter because you have a sawtooth appearance here, you just have a quivering with fib. And one with me on that, yes or no? So far, so good. And just so you are aware, this is the most predominant wave. And I'm going to get to that in just a sec. Okay? So, premature atrial contraction will have a P wave. And it will come prematurely and a QRS and a T. Like that. Somebody with me? Can you see it? Okay? And then what will happen with the heart is it's going to pause after that. And why it does that, we, we call that a compensatory pause. And why it does that is this thing just put a beat in there out of the norm and the pause and the heart's like, oh, okay, hold up, let me reset. And that's what's going on. It's resetting. Make sense? Yes or no? So my heart skips a beat every now and then. Or not, I'm sorry, I'll have a beat in between feet. It's not, but I've never, get, I've been no hard about I've never given, given an explanation, but it makes me cough. I can tell when it's coming on because it makes me cough. If my grandma had the same thing, but uh, I've never given an explanation as to why it does it. You'll have to, when we have people that complain of things like this, okay, you'll have to have a Holter monitor. I can't diagnose. I did have one. And what did it come up with? PACs, PVCs. Get your records, bring them in, we'll discuss it, okay? So, the other thing that happens is maybe a PVC, a premature ventricular contraction. And what you see with that is no P wave because who's the guy contracting? I'm wait for you. Who's the guy contracting? If it's not Atria, who is it? The ventricle. Yeah, okay? And what you're gonna see is the predominant this. No P wave, just the predominant wave. See it? Everybody see it? Okay, that's a PVC. 
And sometimes they come together and we call it bigeminy. Sometimes they go in triplets and we call them trigeminy. With me? Okay? And that's a PVC. All right? Now, you may come across somebody, okay? And you have a normal wave like this. And then the next thing you see. What is that? Aside from squiggly lines, Miss Neal, I have no idea. What is that? <laughs> Listen, it's the most predominant wave. It's ventricular. And what you're looking at once you count this is you're going to have a rate over 100, which makes it tachycardic. Yes or no? And we have VTAC. We have VTAC, ventricular tachycardia. This ventricle's pumping, right? But it ain't gonna do you any good if you don't have enough blood in that ventricle, okay? And now the body and the blood pressure starts to plummet, okay? And here's what happens to you. Like this, now I end up with, I'm coming into coarse V-fib, V ventricle fibrillation, flat line. They say give atropine, give epinephrine because I want to get you back to this. It's a more shockable pattern. Follow me now? Yes or no? Just an introduction. You'll get the rest in third trimester, but at least you have the basics, okay, to go forward. Is everybody with me? Yes? All right. So the biggest thing with older people is they end up with dysrhythmias like in particular, that's common, AFib, okay? AFib. <clears throat> so just so you know, when the heart is contracting, the name for that is systole. And when the heart is relaxing, okay, the name for that is? Is diastole. Because my God, if I died, am I not relaxed? <laughs> I mean, think about it. If I die, am I not relaxed? Is that an easy way to remember this, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got a blood pressure. Ready? 120 over 80. 120 with contraction, okay? 80 is your diastole. That's where you are resting, okay? And you think about a hose, and you turn on that hose, okay? And, the, and if you turn off the hose, it's at rest. Is everybody with me here? Okay? But I know people, there are people that have, I want you to picture this, 190 over 110. How relaxed is that? Not very relaxed. Nah. And so what you're now visualizing is a heart that's trying to pump blood out to the systemic system, to the vascular system, and that vascular system is resisting. Is everybody with me on that? It's resisting. And so what happens with that heart is it does what any muscle is going to do. It's going to get bigger. If you go work out in the gym and you work out with resistance, or your muscle is going to get bigger. Uh-huh. Heart does too. There's only one problem. Heart muscle gets bigger. It gets weaker. Okay? So people with cardiomegaly, enlarged heart, okay? Normal heart, guys, should be like this, okay? Cardiomegaly <coughs> hearts beat like this. You're not pushing enough blood out. Does that make sense? Okay? So far so good? Okay. So, age-related changes. Okay. Just put a little... There you are. Decreased mar cardiac muscle tone. Okay? It's all about output, and the blood pressure is going to go down. Okay? I'm laying down, and you want to get me up in the morning to go to breakfast, right? And I get up, little 86-year-old me. Are you going to let me dangle a little bit? Yes. I hope so, because it takes my vessels as an older person a little bit longer to vasoconstrict to maintain VP. If you get me up right away, I'm gonna hit the floor because I end up with something called orthostatic hypotension. Is everybody with me there? 
okay? So those are some of the issues. They have an increase in heart size, left ventricular, left because that left is trying to pump out to the body, but I got an old guy here that's got blood pressure issues, and that left ventricle been working so hard trying to get the blood out to the body, and he's me resistance, okay? So increased heart size, do you all see it? All right, De and because of that decreased cardiac output, okay? The heart is a, a miracle in itself with the one ventricle. If this is the size of your heart, and I'm telling you that about two to three medicine cups of blood are in one ventricle, that should tell you, wow, okay? And so I open up, and when I put two or three medicine cups worth of blood, it stretches the heart right? And the more it stretches, the harder the pump. Starling's Law, ring a bell to anybody? Starling's Law. But when I have an enlarged heart, it can't pump out a lot amount of blood, okay? All right, decreased elasticity of the heart muscle and blood vessels, okay? Decreased pacemaker cells, that's the sinoatrial node. Fat is coming over that, and before you know it, it no longer works, and we can see it on an ECG because there's no P wave or there's something wrong with it or you have multiple foci that are, when I say to you foci, I'm talking about multiple signals that are firing, okay, in the atria, causing the fibrillation that you see, okay? Decrease baroreceptor sensitivity. Baroreceptors are dealing with blood pressure, okay? Baroreceptors, chemoreceptors, deal with chemicals like oxygen and, and CO2, okay? And then increased incidence of valvular sclerosis. Valves should be very flush and shut very nicely, okay? But if they're sclero sclerotic, they're hardened, and so you may hear a murmur, yes or no, because they're not gonna close as nicely, okay? And then the other one is increased atherosclerosis. Athro, plaque. Is somebody with me on that? Athro is plaque. Arteriosclerosis, either way is hardening. Sclerosis is hardening. Is somebody with me there? Breaking down the word. So if I have atherosclerosis, eventually I'll probably end up having arteriosclerosis. And how do you know? Because you go to draw my blood and my veins and my vessels feel very cordy. They're not nice and bouncy like a trampoline. Okay, so this is not going to be an easy stick. Is everybody with me there? Okay. So we all know now what orthostatic hypotension is, yes or no? I'm laying down, I sit up, and how do I know I have it? Because the blood pressure numbers change by 20 points and the pulse rate goes up. The body is responding to that change in blood pressure, trying to compensate. Okay. So, common disorders seen with aging, coronary artery disease, that is the coronary arteries are the ones that supply in the heart, yes or no? Okay, and I said to you the way God made us, are they are the first arteries that branch off of the aorta and oxygen rich, and that's what the heart needs, yes or no, right, okay? Coronary valve disease, so murmurs, mitral valve prolapse, things like that, yes? Okay. Cardiac arrhythmias, where they may have a heart block, first degree, second degree, third degree, whatever it may be. All right. Congestive heart failure simply means congestive heart failure. I'm congested. What am I full of? I am full of fluid. And that also is dangerous, and there's two types of congestive heart failure. There's left and there's right, and I don't care which one comes first. If it is on the left side, okay, that means that the heart is backing up with fluid. You with me on this? And if it's congestive heart failure on the left side, then I'm going to have fluid in my lungs because the blood can't get from the lungs to the left heart. Isn't that where it's normally flowing? So I have dyspnea, short of breath. You listen to me with a stethoscope, okay? And you hear crackles and raw and everything. Does everybody with me on that? Very short of breath. So far, so good. 
If I have congestive heart failure on the right side, then I have fluid backing up in the body. What do you see? Miss Poe, edema. Edema, okay? Jugular vein distension, okay? Because it can't get into the right side of the heart. Everything backs up. Fluid is fluid, no matter how you slice it, okay? So that is congestive heart failure. And so typically what we see with congestive heart failure, the two things is, are you ready? Dyspnea and edema. And what is their problem? Activity intolerance. My father called me one morning, not feeling well. What's going on, Dad? Did you get a blood pressure cuff? Let's see what's going on. Heart rate was 35. 35. I said, well, no wonder you don't feel like doing anything. You, you, you just have enough energy just to supply your cells right now. You're not going to get anywhere. He had to have a pacemaker placed. He'd been living like that for over a month. He could have died at any time. Okay? And then, of course, we talked about cardiomegaly. Megaly simply means enlargement. Okay? Enlargement. The heart is enlarged. And when the heart is enlarged, that's going to not allow for the blood to be pumped out effectively. Okay? And can also mess up the conduction system. Is everybody with me on that? Yes? Okay. All right. Let me see if I have anything else. And you all have tables in here. Make sure you're looking at those. Okay. They talk about, we talked about the dyspnea, okay? And I've also talked about, so if part of the heart is not getting blood and now you have a myocardial infarction, I told you part of that heart now is gonna be scarred over, yes or no? It becomes necrotic, it scars over. You can't get that back. That will never come back. That's it. So is everybody with me there, okay? All right, let me see, coronary valve, we talked about that, arrhythmias. You guys have signs and symptoms of myocardial infarction, sudden onset of dyspnea, chest tightness or heaviness, anxiety, confusion, syncope, which means what? If you could tell me. Passing out. Passing out, back pain, and jaw or tooth pain. And the way people present, like I said, are very different. Women typically have this back pain in between their shoulder blades, okay? Maybe even have jaw pain. Guys pretty much present with this left arm pain, okay? And African Americans, for the most part, may not feel anything but dyspnea, okay? And this is why we see a higher mortality rate in that population, okay? All right, because you have to ask yourself, if you're having a heart attack, if you think about the older person, what is the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna deny it. Ah, that kid, this can't be happening to me. This can't be happening to me. It's just, it's just GERD, right? Okay, and that's where we get into trouble, okay? All right, also what we see is peripheral vascular disease, okay? And how I'll describe that to you, if it's vascular, you could have peripheral arterial or peripheral venous. Is everybody with me on this? Now, stay with me, because you're gonna learn about this too, all right? If I have peripheral arterial disease, what that means is that the blood cannot get down to the periphery. What do you see as a nurse, okay? You see toenails that are thick and are very slow growing. You see no hair on the legs because there's no blood to kind of get down there, not enough anyway. You feel the extremities and they're cool to touch, okay? I get a wound and even the wound has a pale appearance. Follow me? So far so good? And so the only thing that I can do, and how people report, they come to the office and they say, I have pain in my legs every time I'm walking. Well, you have peripheral arterial disease. What you're experiencing is intermittent claudication. You know what we tell them for treatment? <laughs> you gotta walk more. Why are we telling you to walk more? Because we're trying to get the body to make collateral circulation. What's collateral circulation? If I have a vessel, you see these little old people like myself that have all these little vessels right here? Yes or no? Okay, 
Maybe my veins are not as good as they used to be when I was younger, so the body made other veins so we could still get the blood down. Everybody with me on that? That's collateral circulation. So you got to walk. They hate it, but it will get better as the body makes new vessels to bring blood down to the extremities. Make sense? Okay. You have peripheral venous. You, peripheral venous disease, okay? Here's the problem. You can't get the blood back up. So what do you see? You see, ever see older people in the store that have this brownish appearance on their lower legs? They have peripheral venous disease, and that's hemoserotin. That's broken down red blood cells that you're seeing in that area. Red blood cells live for how many days? 120. 120, okay? So that's what you're seeing. The other thing is, if they get a wound down there, the wound is wet. It's wet because there's all that blood down there. So what do we tell these people to do? Raise your feet up, elevate, wear compression hose, things like that to help get the blood back up. Does that make sense? Okay? Occlusive peripheral vascular problems, that means occlusive means there's a clot. Okay? There's a clot. And then looking at varicose veins, that also can happen with venous disease because we call those incompetent valves. The valves got lazy. They got lazy and they're not able to, valves have one purpose. I don't care if it's in a heart. I don't care if it's in your vascular system. They're keeping one-way flow. They're just keeping one-way flow. And if that doesn't work, then the blood just backs up. Is everybody with me on that? Yes or no? So you've seen people with varicose veins, yes or no? Okay, you know what hemorrhoids are, don't you? Mm -hmm. They're varicose veins of the butt. <laughs> what do we tell people with varicose veins of the butt? Don't sit on the toilet. You're just bringing more blood right down there and just engorging everything, yes or no? Yes. Okay, we'll talk about esophageal varices. We'll get to that later. That's in the esophagus, okay? Uh, aneurysm, we talked about that. What is that? It's an aneurysm. In your bank, it's in an artery, okay? And the artery is weak. If you think about clowns that blow up those long tubular balloons, yes or no? Mm -hmm. And let's say that part of that balloon is weak, and so you see an outer pouching. Do you all see what I'm talking about? That's an aneurysm. Okay, most of older people, and typically it's in a certain class, male, hypertension, has a history of hypertension, not taking care of it, and they end up with triple A, okay? Abdominal aortic aneurysm. You put your stethoscope on, you should be hearing bowel sounds, not a pulse. But you can pick it up, and if they're laying down flat, and I'm not talking about the skinny mini person that you could see this in, I'm just talking about a regular person like you. We lay you flat, we can see your pulse, okay? Yeah. I'm not gonna say you have an aneurysm, okay? But in older people, that's what you'll see. You'll see this. That's an aneurysm, okay? And then of course, hypertensive disease, yes or no? The silent killer is what we call it because people say, I feel fine. I don't need to take this, I feel fine. And what do we say about hypertensive meds in men? What did we say? That's right. See, I mentioned a penis and somebody just popped right up there. I know how to wake you people up now. Okay, I gotta be careful of these high schoolers that come in, I might shock them. Okay, so again, all right, this is the reason, and I'm going to reiterate it again. Anything that messes with the mighty sword has got to go with the men, right? Mm -hmm. What you've got to explain to the men folk is you're not going to be any good if you're stroked out. Okay, take the BP meds, and by the way, let's write your script for Viagra, Cialis, whatever else. Somebody with me on that? Okay, this is a real thing for people. And you think a guy is going to want to come up to you, Miss Logan, so young, he's 65, I'm not going to tell her about my penis problem, no way. You see where I'm going? So we have to broach that and say, let me guess, are you having problems with your intimacy? You can start it that way. Okay? Is everybody with me? All right? Stay professional, factual, non-judgmental, and you will help that patient. Okay? All right. 
hemopoietic and lymphatic systems. Where do white blood cells come from? Thank you. The bone marrow. Okay. What cells are made in the bone marrow? What else? What else? She said red blood cells, white blood cells, and what else? Platelets. Platelets. Who said that? Platelets. Very good, Larissa. Okay. And then the lymphatic systems. We're going to talk about lymphatic in just a second because it's closely related. All right. So come from the bone marrow, okay? And that's what makes our form, what we call formed elements, okay? So let me just draw another picture on here. A and P, I spent a lot of time drawing pictures. I haven't done A and P in class in a while, so my <laughs> drawings are not as good as they used to be. I'm no longer a Picasso. here in tubes so you guys can see it for yourself. I need to do another color. Uh, I hope that comes off. <laughs> oh, and there are times I'm just going to make a little thing like this and call that a buffy coat, but I'll do that in a sec. All right. So, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, right? come from your bone marrow, okay? And then we're gonna talk about lymphatic in just a se second because it's very closely related, okay? So, blood flows within the heart and vessels of the cardiovascular system. Functions of the blood. Give me the function of the red blood cell, guys. It carries oxygen bound to what, sir? Hemoglobin, the protein hemoglobin, okay? Everybody with me? Do you have to have adequate, adequate iron in the body? Yes, you do. If you don't, then you end up with a condition like iron deficiency anemia. There's many different types of anemias, okay? All right? So <clears throat> the other thing is in the plasma, okay? And in the plasma, it will transport nutrients, waste products, blood gases, and hormones, okay? In the plasma, it also has proteins in there. One particular protein that serves us well is something called albumin, okay? Albumin is a colloid osmotic protein, and what that means to you is that it's gonna pull fluid, okay? And I'm a little old lady, okay? My taste has changed. I don't wanna eat meat anymore. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get enough protein in my diet. Is somebody with me? And when that happens, my blood pressure falls because there's not enough albumin to pull fluid into the vascular system to maintain BP. Does that make sense to y'all? Okay? You may see more of my fluid leaking now into my, my tissues, edema. Okay? So check my albumin levels. With me? Okay? <clears throat> so... We have all different kinds, not to mention with that, we have gamma globulins, things like that, all in the plasma here, okay? Everybody with me? White blood cells serve the purpose of doing what? Fighting, Fighting infection, okay? And if we drew blood on one of you guys, and let's say, Haley, you got a very bad infection or something's going on with you, okay? And we draw her blood, I can let this test tube sit for a second, Okay, let it sit for not a second, but a while, and she'll develop a buffy coat. It's kind of a white kind of color, and you know what it is? It's all her white blood cells up here. She has a buffy coat, and she has a condition called, you ready? Leukocytosis. Luke is white. Cyte, C-Y-T, is cell. Osis is condition. I'm breaking down the word. Leukocytosis, which means she has an elevated white count. Anybody know the normal white count numbers? And it from like eight to, and it eight to nine or ten. Oh, 
<laughs> five to ten. Five thousand to ten thousand. Okay? If we do a differential on you, then we're looking at all the different types of white cells. Okay? Neutrophils, they're your first line soldiers, they're the ones that come out first. Okay? When you look at somebody that has pus, okay, and you put that underneath the microscope, you're gonna look at bacteria as well as unfortunately dead neutrophils. Okay? Um, there's videos out there, uh, it's kind of cool to watch, of a neutrophil chasing a diplococci in the body. So you'd be amazed what the body does. There's, I think I put one of the videos on your, <coughs> on your um, D2L for fundamentals, okay? But you could actively see it chasing a diplococci, and then it goes, whoop, which does what? What is that? You just ate it. What? Phagocytosis. Okay, all right, so also with general functions of blood, regulation of fluid and electrolyte balance, acid-base balance, and body temperature. We talked about the blood buffers, yes or no? You guys did jumping jacks, and I said the first buffers you went through were those blood buffers, okay? <clears throat> all right, and body temperature, because blood is what? Warm, okay? Protection against pathogenic attack by your white blood cells and against excessive blood loss through clotting mechanisms. We have the clotting cascade that you all went through in A&P. Part of that clotting cascade, you have to have enough calcium, okay? <laughs> or you can't switch prothrombin to thrombin, which then makes fibrinogen to fibrin, and fibrin is the, the little threads that end up making the clot. Are you with me on that? You're gonna poke each other's fingers, okay? And check a blood glucose, yes or no? We don't, that's not a big issue. We have little platelets that can clot those off, okay? But if I have a major incision or a cut, then what will happen is that the vessel itself will constrict to try and close things off, and then also the clotting cascade takes place as well. So is everybody with me on that, okay? All right. Albumin, the most abundant plasma protein, is important in the maintenance of osmotic pressure needed to regulate what? Blood pressure. Blood what? Blood pressure. Blood pressure and blood volume. Guys, it's simple. If you don't have enough blood volume, okay, your blood pressure is going to drop. Okay, Kai's coming in here with a gallon of water, okay? This is going to be a great person to draw blood on because he's going to have the nice popping veins, okay? Plenty of volume, okay? For the person that doesn't drink any fluid whatsoever, such as myself, I'm, not, I'm just an old nurse. We can go 12 hours without drinking fluid or pain. That's just my training, okay? But I wouldn't be a good one to try and get blood on because I'm dry. Does that make sense? His blood pressure will be pretty good. He seems pretty healthy, okay? whereas my blood pressure could be a little lower with no volume, okay? All right, globulins, okay? There's alpha globulins, beta globulins, gamma globulins, and so some of these globulins carry cholesterol out of the body. You've heard of HDL and LDL, yes or no? High density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein. Everybody with me here? We're gonna talk about it in nutrition. High density, which one's better, high or low? Huh? High. high? Why do you say high? You're not sure of the rationale? Okay. High density lipoprotein, what it does is it's a protein that's very dense that encapsulates cholesterol and takes it out of the body. A low density, okay, is not very dense, encapsulates cholesterol, but unfortunately breaks down along the way, and so it doesn't take cholesterol out of the body. Is somebody with me on that? And now they've subcategorized them, VDLD, or very low density lipoprotein, things like that, okay? So just remember, LDLs, low density, is gonna lower you in the ground. Does that make it easy to remember, okay? Low density will lower you in the ground if that one's higher than your high density, okay? So, 
Globulins function to transport for lipids and fat soluble vitamins and gamma globulins are composed or a gamma globulin fraction is composed of antibodies that provide immunity from pathogens. IgM, IgE, IgD, it just depends on what you're fighting. Make sense? Okay? And by the way, antibodies are not killing things. All antibodies do. And antibodies are always, in every book that you see, antibodies are depicted as a Y. Okay? So here I am. I'm a Y. I'm an antibody. Okay? There's the pathogen. Here it is. Come get it. That's all they're doing. Okay, I got another pathogen. Come get both of them. You all with me on that? With the antibodies? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how it works for you and how you feel it is you get sick and you're in bed. Okay. Now you start getting on the other side of the sickness because you have antibodies. And you say, you know, <clears throat> today I don't feel so bad. I think I'm going to get up and go to school. Start getting ready and you're like, uh, no. Maybe not, okay? At that point, you have to rest more because your body's fighting. When you're sleeping, your body's fighting, okay? <clears throat> and now your antibodies are getting more and more, pre <clears throat> um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, more and more, um, I can't think of the word. It just like escaped my, my mind. <laughs> Anyway, you're getting more and more antibodies, okay? And they're taking in more and more bacteria, which then the macrophages and bacteria or, or white blood cells are coming by and engulfing more and more. And now, after that nap, you're like, wow, I feel much better after that. Does that make sense? And then you start feeling better and better a little faster and faster. Does that make sense? Okay? But antibodies simply label the pathogen and say, here it is, come get it. Okay? All right. See, I get so excited and I lose all my stuff. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, blood erythrocytes, red blood cells, they're the ones that carry oxygen bound to hemoglobin. Okay? All right. Leukocytes are your white blood cells, and thrombocytes are known as platelets, and they're responsible for what? Clotting, okay? All right. Now, your lymphatic system is an interesting system. It's like the vascular system, guys, except it's a dead-end system, okay? It goes to a lot of dead-end area. If you think about your vessels, you have the artery, the arterial, the capillary network, the venule, the veins, and it's all circular, yes or no, okay? The lymphatic system works in between that, and with the lymphatic system, that is a very permeable uh, vessel. In other words, it's going to allow fluid, okay? Well, let's just put it this way. Arteries with the pressure is pushing fluid and nutrients out through that capillary network. Is everybody with me there? Your, your lymphatic system is laying in between that and what the lymphatic system does is any extra fluid goes back into the lymphatic system. Is everybody with me there? Yes or no? Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. The other thing that lymphatic systems have are lymph nodes. We know about lymph nodes, yes? Mm -hmm. When a lymph node is swollen, what's happening? Huh? You have, you have an infection, okay? And lymph nodes are very interesting little structures because if you picture that we're in a lymph node right now, there are stationary white blood cells, okay, hanging out in that lymph node. Let's say that we're all white blood cells, okay? Interesting thing about lymph nodes, they have a couple doors going in, but only one door going out. So there's a couple afferent vessels coming in, okay, and you're just kind of hanging out waiting for that pathogen to come in, okay? Pathogen comes in, there's only one way out, okay? Good luck on him getting out. Does that make sense, yes or no? Okay, so that's the lymphatic system. And what will happen with that fluid, okay, if you look at your book or your A&P book, it empties it back into the vascular system, yes or no? Okay, the right lymphatic duct, yes or no? Okay, and the thoracic duct, 
But the body's a little strange with this because with the right lymphatic duct, it only drains, ready for this, the, I think it's half of the head and, and that quarter of the right side of the body. The left side, the thoracic duct, drains everything else. So it's a little uneven. Is everybody with me? Okay? But it's going to, fluid is fluid. It depends on where it's located as to what you call it. Is everybody with me? Okay? So if it's blood plasma, that means it's in the vascular system, yes or no? If it's lymph fluid, it's in the lymph system, right? And that's going to recirculate and dump back into the vessels, now making that lymph fluid become what we call plasma. It's simply by where it's located. Are you with me? If, if, if you have fluid in the tissue, what do we call that? What type of fluid is it? Huh? Don't be sorry. Interstitial turbine. It's just a different name, okay? We got fluid in the joint, we call it synovial fluid. Yes or no? Okay? <coughs> fluid in the uh, in the spinal cord area, what is it called? Spinal fluid. I'll go with that. Okay, so is everyone with me? Fluid is fluid. It just depends on where it's located. But the lymph system and the vascular system work closely together because the lymph system will dump its fluid into vascular, and then vascular, with pumping, it gets fluid out through filtration, it's pressure. You've learned about osmosis, yes, diffusion, filtration, filtration through pressure, and so I want you to think about it. The person that has high blood pressure of a diastolic of 118, okay, is that a lot of pressure? Yes or no? So, is it not normal when people have hypertension that they have some edema on the lower legs? Mm -hmm. That's because of the pressure pushing out that fluid that tells me you're not taking care of yourself. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Okay, so permeable vessels absorb fluid and proteins from the tissues fluid moves through a series of lymph nodes and nodules that trap and phagocytize forward materials before the fluid enters the circulatory system and the subclavian veins and hopefully hopefully the pathogen will stay within the lymph system as you think about the way we're made guys the biggest lymphatic tissue is right up here tonsils and adenoids yes or no and then you have all these cervical lymph nodes right here. When you do physical assessments on each other, you're going to be checking these nodes, okay? And if you feel a node on one side, then I want you to open up the mouth. Anything that's an orifice in the face, you're going to look in. Open up the mouth, and I'll be, you'll probably see erythema or redness on the back side of the throat on that side. Does that make sense? Okay? <clears throat> all right. If it happens to, for whatever reason, the pathogen get into the blood stream, then what do we have? Sepsis. Sepsis. But we do have one organ that can protect us that does act as a lymph organ, but it's a lymph organ for the vascular system. It filters blood. Do you know what that organ is? The spleen. Not the liver, the spleen. huh? The spleen. the spleen. The spleen. Okay? So, yes, so the spleen is a lymphatic organ, okay? It's considered a lymphatic organ because it protects and filters blood, okay? Now, there are people sometimes that they have, a, have to have a splenectomy. Ectomy is removal, okay? And if that happens, those are the people that really need to get vaccinated because they're very susceptible, okay? Does that make sense, okay? I'll let you all break in about 10 minutes. I want you all running five laps and then be ready to go. <laughs> uh -oh. Christine, you barely look alive over there, honey. Okay. okay. I'm going to have to find an AED out there and shock you. All right. So the spleen and thymus, okay? Spleen is responsible for producing lymphocytes and monocytes which enter the bloodstream. They also contain fixed plasma cells. When I say fixed, it means stationary, Okay stationary, that they stay there, okay? <clears throat> Which produce antibodies to foreign antigens and fixed ma macrophages. Embryonic bone marrow and the spleen produce the initial T lymphocytes. The bone marrow and the spleen in the embryo 
is where you're getting your production of these cells. And then what happens is, I'm a T cell, yay, I get to go to, I get to, go to school. Guess where my school is? <coughs> the thymus, that's why we call it a T cell. And I said to go to school in the thymus, it's a tough school, yes or no, because if you cannot identify <coughs> self versus not self, we're gonna take you out. You don't fail, we just eliminate you. With me on that, yes or no? So when a baby is born, a newborn with no real immunity other than what he got from mother in utero, in utero yes or no, these kids are born with spleens, or spleens, thymus is so large that if you go to take a picture, an x-ray of the cardiac silhouette, very hard to see it because it's behind this big old thymus. Is everybody with me? As we get older and older and older and more exposed to things, the thymus starts to just atrophy, 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 okay, and becomes by the, our teenagers very, very small. So is everybody with me on that? Okay? So lymphocytes and immunity. B lymphocytes are responsible for the recognition of antigens located on a foreign cell and for humoral immunity. And I'm gonna make this very simple. B cells, humoral immunity. Is it human to make antibodies? Yes. yes. What is the cell that makes the antibodies? B cells. Actually, it's the B, but they develop into what we call plasma cells, and then the plasma cells make your antibodies, okay? But it all starts with the B cells, so that provides humoral immunity, okay? All right? T cells do more cell-to-cell -cell combat. It's the best way for me to put it, okay? Cytokines, perforins, things like that, all right? So sensitized helper T's detect antigens and <coughs> induce the B cells to produce antibodies, which are then found in the globulin portion of the plasma. So that's why I was saying, okay, if I'm a macrophage and I put something on my surface and I come to a helper T and I say, is this me or not me? And helper T says, not you, let me call to the B cells. Let me get some help, okay? calls to the B cells, and B cells say, yep, not us, and then they start making antibodies. Does that make sense? And we talked about how HIV works by attacking that T cell, making it its own little factory, and now it can't even function to call the Bs, and now I get every infection you can think of. Is everybody with me on that? That's why the treatment for HIV is keeping the viral load way down. Way down to, if you listen to the commercials, it says undetectable, does it not? You tell me, does it not? Mm -hmm. They say, I am detectable. Does that not worry you to go and get a blood transfusion? Could they give blood and be undetectable? And now you end up getting the virus? <coughs> Brianna's eyes went, what? <laughs> Donate your own blood, autologous blood. If you know, if you have, if you're going in for elective surgery and he says to you, you're probably gonna need two units of blood, great. Where do I donate? I'll donate my own blood. And you could do that about up to two weeks before your surgery. Is everybody with me there? We love that. Yeah. Autologous. Okay. All right. One more <coughs> slide and I'll let you all break. Age-related changes. Increased plasma viscosity. It is thick. The blood is thick. Of course it's thick. They're not drinking enough water. Yes or no? So my plasma portion <coughs> is like down to here. <laughs> Does that make thick blood? Yes or no? Yeah. When we draw some of you guys, we're going to see who's been drinking and who has not been drinking fluids because we'll tape them up here and you'll see, wow, I don't have a lot of plasma there. I better increase my fluid. Kai? Kai will probably have a lot of fluid. <laughs> He may even look like he's he may <coughs> diluted. He may appear like he's got less red blood cells because of all the fluid on board. But he's only hemodiluted. I'm not going to diagnose him with anemia. Make sense? Okay. So they have increased blood viscosity, which leads to thick blood. Can they clot? Yes. Yep. When blood sits, it, it clots, they get sluggish, okay? Decreased red blood cell production. 
Unfortunately, yes. A lot of our elderly people have a different type of anemia. We call it pernicious anemia. Anybody know what that is? Pernicious anemia, where they have to get B12 injections for the rest of their life. Anybody here getting B12 injections for pernicious anemia? No, my stepmom does, though. It's a cherry red color, very pretty. Okay, so what happens with pernicious anemia? Did she have a gastric bypass or anything? No, so back in like the early 2000s, um, we found out that she was anemic, but um, the doctors here didn't know what was going on with her, and she almost died. My grandmother came and got her and took her to New York um, to see her family doctor, and they diagnosed her. She actually had to learn how to walk again, use the bathroom on her own, like she basically went into vegetation state she, her brain was not being perfused with oxygen because she didn't have enough red blood cells, okay? So if it's iron deficiency anemia, okay, the cells look pale and they're microcytic, they're small, okay? Red blood cell does not, it's a biconcave cell, there is no nucleus in this, okay? With pernicious anemia, what happens on the lower part of the stomach, for whatever reason, there's something called intrinsic factor, and that stops working, and then they can no longer absorb B12. That's why it has to be given by injection. It doesn't do her any good to take it by mouth, okay? And so and that's why I asked for gastric bypass, because they'll bypass that part of the stomach, and then they're on B12 the rest of their life. They're going to have pernicious anemia. I put that blood underneath the microscope, and those cells look very large and round, and they break easy, okay? So pernicious anemia is <clears throat> another kind of anemia, but it has to do with lack of intrinsic factor in the stomach, okay? Um, let's see here. Decreased mobilization of neutrophils. They're not really able to fight infection that well. Is somebody with me on that? My mother runs a temperature of 97.5. That is her normal temp, okay? If my mom calls me and says, I'm 98.6, and we know that to be normal, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. If my mother calls me and says to me, I'm 98.6, you know what? That's a fever for her. You with me? A lot of our elderly run sub temps. So just cause your texts are going around and taking a temperature, oh, 98.6. They don't usually run that. Something's going on. You better check it out. Okay? Little old people that pick up infection in, very difficult. They just don't respond the way the normal body responds. Okay? So decreased mobilization of neutrophils, very hard to fight infection, and an increase in immature T cell response. And so if we have immature T cells, they're not going to fight the way they should fight. Is everybody with me on that? Okay? All right, let me see if there was anything else on that. <clears throat> talked about that, talked about that, talked about that. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if it goes into that next. Yeah. So. Yeah, anemia, inadequate levels of red blood cells or insufficient hemoglobin, okay? And guys, it's very simple. If I don't have the red blood cells, then how am I going to get oxygen to tissues? How? Am I going to? Then I have a perfusion issue, okay? I have a perfusion issue. And that's why she was listless, okay, Adriana? Because she wasn't getting enough blood to the brain that had oxygen, okay? All right. Leukemia. Leukemia is very easy to explain. In the bone marrow with leukemia, don't get any ideas. Ooh, that's a bad looking bone right there. <laughs> All right, so you told me that we're making red cells, yes or no, yes? Red cells, you told me that we're making white cells, yes? And you told me that we're also making platelets, yes or no? Okay, unfortunately with leukemia, Luke means what? White, emia means blood, yes or no? So we have a problem now with the white blood cells and here's what happens, they start to over proliferate. 
they're really being made in here, okay? And when that happens, good luck on making any kind of red blood cells and good luck on making any kind of platelets, okay? So we have a large, abundant number of white blood cells. There's one problem. The blood cells that come out of here are immature and they can't fight. They can't fight, okay? And then the patient ends up with pano, pancythemia, which is pan all over, site cell emia. In other words, they are deficient in all cells. And I'm gonna say they have an overabundance <coughs> of white cells, but they're immature. They're not gonna do any good. Does that make sense? Yes or no? So leukemia is not abnormal for our elderly population. What we do with le leukemia, we don't mess around with it. We blast them. We really blast them with, with chemo, hard, very hard. We basically wipe that out in hopes that the bone marrow will then start to produce the normal cells it has always produced with me on that yes or no okay all right let me go ahead and let you guys take a break 10 minutes <laughs>